Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video is part two of a four part video series that I call the Bubble Nebula Project. In part one, I talked about the equipment that I used to acquire the data and how I set up my sequence in Nina using the advanced sequencer. In this video, we are going to pre-process that data together using PixInsight. And finally, in parts three and four, we will go over the post-processing steps in order to get an aesthetically pleasing result. So what exactly is pre-processing? It is simply a set of operations that use the raw frames that come out of your camera to eventually create what we call the master light frames, which you can then combine and process further in another phase referred to as post-processing. In this video, I will not be using the famous weighted batch pre-processing script that now ships with PixInsight because I just never took the time to learn how to use it. So I will do all of the pre-processing manually and you'll see that it's pretty easy to do and it gives you a lot of flexibility. I will try to go through all the steps slowly so that you can all follow along, but I have also created chapters so that you can easily skip to the parts of the video that interest you the most. All right, let's get started. Started, let me show you how I organize my files on my hard drive. During a standard processing workflow, especially with a monochrome camera, you can end up with thousands of files, so it's really critical to keep things organized. I learned this trick a couple of years ago from someone on YouTube, I forgot who it was, and I thought it was a really neat way to organize things, so let me show you what I do. I start by creating a calibration frames directory where I place my master bias and my master dark. Eventually, this directory will also hold our master flat frames once we've generated them, one for each filter. Then I create a flat directory, and under that directory, I create a bunch of subdirectories, one for each filter, and that is where I place my raw flat frames. Then I create a flat underscore cal for calibrated directory. And again, under the directory, I create as many subdirectories as I have filters. Then I create a light directory. And again, as many subdirectories as I have filters. And that is where I'm going to place my raw light frames. And then finally, I create a bunch of light underscore something directories. Cal for calibrated, CC for cosmetically corrected, SEL for selected, in reference to the subframe selector, REG for registered, in reference to the star alignment process. So the idea behind this folder structure is that as you make progress through your processing workflow, images are going to flow from the directories at the top to the directories at the bottom. And at the very end, we will end up with six master light frames, in my case, because I have six filters, and I will place those master light frames in the root of this directory. and generate our master flat frames. Before we can do that, we first have to calibrate our raw flat frames. And for that, we are going to be using the image calibration process. So I click on the reset icon, and then I click add files, and then I select all of the raw flat frames, in this case for the green filter. I uncheck enable CFA since my camera is a monochrome camera. And then I set the output directory. So in this case, it'll be flat underscore calibrated and the green subdirectory. I use a ZWASI-533MM Pro, and this camera has a very low dock current. Additionally, my raw flat frames have an exposure of only one to three seconds, depending on the filter. And so I generally don't bother using dark frames to calibrate my flat frames. So I uncheck this. Obviously, we want to uncheck master flat since that's what we're trying to generate. And I just give it the path to the master bias. And then we click on apply global. 
When the process is completed, you should end up with a bunch of files in the output directory that you had selected. The next step is to integrate these files. And for this, we're going to go to the Process Explorer and open Image Integration. Again, click on Reset, and then Add Files, and then you select the files that are in the flat calibrated folder. So we're working on the green filter. Then you expand the image integration section. Keep the combination set to average. Normalization set that to multiplicative. And weights set it to don't care, all weights equals one. You can disable signal and noise evaluation. And then in pixel rejection one, for the rejection algorithm, because I have 50 images, I am going to use the ESD algorithm. And for the normalization, I am going to select equalize fluxes. And then I can disable the generate rejection maps. And finally, click on apply. And here's the result, a seemingly perfectly uniform gray image. Now, if you auto stretch it, now you can see the vignetting and a few dust modes. These defects will also be in your light frames, and that is why flat frames are so critical. They help us remove all of those defects from our light frames. All right, so by now you're probably wondering how you could possibly remember all of these options that I had to set. Well, you actually don't. You do it once, and then you remove the files, and you drag the little triangle here onto the workspace to create a process icon. Then you can close this window here and you can rename this icon. So for example, flat integration. And then you can place the icon right here. And so the next time you double click on the process icon, it will already be perfectly configured. And all you have to do is click on add files. This is what pretty much every PixInsight user eventually does they create their own process icon library. And I have mine, so I can show you. It's a pretty small library of a, maybe a dozen icons. Here they are. And I recommend that you do the same thing. As you process your images, remember that you can drag and drop that little triangle onto the workspace in order to create a pre-configured process instance. Very convenient. While the next step in the process would be to calibrate our light subframes, it is usually common at this point to blink our subs in order to remove the really bad ones. So for example, if you had clouds passing by, or maybe there was an airplane, uh, you want to reject those manually. So open the blink process and then select your light frames. So for example, let's look at uh, the H alpha subs. All right, and now we can blink the images. So you can manually inspect all of your subframes. And let's say you identify one that's really bad. So I don't know, let's pick one here. Uh, you can close this image and it removes it from the set. And you do that for all of the frames that you don't like. And again, focus only on the ones that are really bad. And then when you're done, click on save here. And this will basically allow you to copy all of the frames that you've approved into a new location. And those are the images that you will then calibrate and integrate. Generated a master flat for every single one of our filters. Let's place those master flats in the uh, calibration frames directory. So in my case, I have named them flat underscore the name of the filter. The next step is to use these calibration frames to calibrate our raw light subframes. And again, for that, we're going to be using the image calibration process. Click on reset, add files. And for this example, I'm going to be using the uh, H alpha subframes. For the output directory, again, I will follow my uh, convention. 
and I'm going to put it in the light underscore calibrated HA folder. Then you select your master bias, which is in the calibration frames directory. Select your master dark. My master dark was done for a 15 minute exposure, while these raw lights up frames have a five minute exposure, so you make sure you keep the optimized checkbox checked. And then finally, you select the master flats that you just generated for that filter. And then you click on apply. And when the process is completed, all of the calibrated light subframes will be in the output directory that you selected. All right, so the next step is cosmetic correction. to remove hot or cold pixels from our images by using the cosmetic correction process. Click on Add Files and then select your calibrated images. So we're still working on our H-alpha images. And then for the output directory, you will select Light Calibrated Cosmetically Corrected and then the right uh, filter subfolder. Because we use a master dark, let's go ahead and select it. And this will help the cosmetic correction process identify where the hot or cold pixels are located. And then I open the first image in the list and I apply a screen transfer function. Then I open the real time preview. And then let's start by looking at the cold pixels. So I want to zoom in on a bright area and you can see a lot of cold pixels here. So I click on use auto detect and then cold sigma and it does a really good job at removing all of those cold pixels. Maybe too good a job. So I'm going to increase this just a little bit. Uh, yeah, this looks pretty good. Now we can remove the zoom here. And then let's click on hot sigma and let's look at this number here. And I like to start with having that number around a, around a thousand. So right around here. And then we can go ahead and maybe zoom on the area that uh, has some dark and then see what this does. Yeah, it does a good job here. There's there is a hot pixel here. That's pretty obvious. It removes it. It removes a few others as well. Maybe this is a little bit too high. So maybe I'll knock it down just a little bit. There you go. Okay, so we're fixing 800 hot pixels, 800 about the same number of cold pixels, and that's good enough. So we can close the real time preview and then we can click on apply. This next step is the subframe selection. And in my opinion, it might be the most critical step to get right in pre-processing. So let's go ahead and open the subframe selector process. Click on Add Files, and then add your calibrated and cosmetically corrected subframes. Make sure that the routine is set to measure subframes, and then click on Apply. And this is what you get here. Uh, this is probably the most important part of this entire process. So. Let's first, what I like to do is I like to first look at um, FWHM and I, you see that there was one night that was really bad. And so I'd like to literally reject those and basically keep everything that's within this range. So in the approval window, I'm going to type FWHM less than 3.0 and then click on this little icon. And as you can see, it removes all of those. Then I like to look at the eccentricity. And we're going to remove all the worst offenders. 
Uh, the reason I do that is because there could have been some wind gusts and uh, I want to remove images where the stars are just too elongated. So maybe 0 0.6. There you go. And so this is for the approval. This means is that any image that doesn't fit these criteria will not even be copied into our up output folder when we run this process. All right, the next step is to weigh how much each image should contribute to the final stacked image. Obviously, we want our best images to contribute the most. And so I like to use the PSF signal weight, uh, which I usually normalize like this. And when we uh, run this, it basically adds a new header to each image and the value of and the name of the header is SS weight and the value of the header is going to be a floating point number. And we can visualize it by selecting weight and then sorting in descending order. And then we can look at our best image, which in this case has a weight of one apply a screen transfer function and then convince ourselves that this is actually the best image. So the next step is to select output subframes and then you set your output directory, which in our case will be light calibrated, cosmetically corrected, selected, and then H alpha. And then you click on apply. When the process has completed its execution, only the images that I approved end up in the output folder. And all of these images now have a new header named SS weight for subframe selector weight. And the value of that header is set by the expression that I defined. And it will be read by the image registration process in a subsequent step in order to determine how much each subframe should contribute to the final master light frame. All right, so we're almost done. Before we can stack our images, we need to register them, meaning that we need to align them. And this is done using the star alignment process. So open the process, click on reset, and then add your files. So these are the, uh, the files that we just approved using the subframe selector. Look for your best image, which in our case, was September 23rd, number 56, and set it as the reference image. Make sure that the working mode is set to register match images. Generating the drizzle data is optional. I'm going to leave it checked. It takes a little bit longer to run if you have this option checked. But the nice thing about having this option checked is that you can run what's called the drizzle integration down the line and uh, see if it makes any difference compared to your uh, integrated image. Sometimes it does, sometimes it does not. And then finally, sets the output directory to light, calibrated, cosmetically corrected, selected, registered, and then the right filter subfolder, and then click on apply. When the process is done running, all of your files will be in the output directory. And this will include not just image files, but also .xdrz files, which contain drizzle information. Now we need to do the same thing for every single one of our filters. And then we can move on to the next step, which is image stacking. We are finally ready to stack our images. So let's go ahead and open the image integration process. As always, we click on Reset, and then Add Files, and then select the images that come from your registered folder. And then expand the Image Integration section. Make sure that you set the combination to Average, Normalization to Additive with Scaling, the Weights to Fits keyword, and then write in the name of the header written by the subframe selector, which is SS weight. Make sure that the generate integrated image option is checked. 
Optionally, you can enable generate drizzle data if you're planning to run a drizzle integration later on. And then in pixel rejection one, because we have more than 50 images, I am going to select the ESD algorithm. And that is it. Everything else is good. So we can click on apply. This is going to take a very long time. So depending on the number of images that you have, depending on the size of your images, it can take from you know, an hour to sometimes uh, five hours, maybe more. It also depends on how powerful your computer is. So let's go ahead and click on apply and then we'll come back when it's done. It took quite a long time to complete, but here's the final result. So this is H alpha and it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of stacking artifact, which will have to be cropped out, but that's completely normal. And overall, yeah, things look pretty good. The stars look relatively round. Now let's take a look at O3 and then S2. Master light files at the root of my working directory and I've opened them in the workspace. So let me show you something real quick. Let's open the blue file and S2, for example, and let's look. As you can probably notice, they don't, they're not aligned. So the next step is to align all of these views. And for this, we're going to be using the star alignment process again. So don't forget to click on reset. And then we're just going to open our views. Because we're going to be using HA as the reference, we can remove it. And then we just click on apply. All right, so the process is done. And now let's verify that these are well aligned. So again, let's use the blue and S2. And yeah, sure enough, now they're aligned. Now that all of our frames are aligned, let's crop them. So we're going to be using the dynamic crop process. Click on one image, define your crop area. So Let's just say that it's going to be 2600 by 2600 and centered on the frame, for example. And then what you can do is drag and drop the blue triangle onto the images that you want to crop. So there's for HA. And then for last one, we can just click on apply. All right, so now we have all of our frames, which are all perfectly aligned and they're cropped, they're all the same size, and there's no more stacking artifacts. And we are done with the pre-processing. These images will serve as the starting point for the next video, which will be all about post-processing. All right, so I hope that you found this video helpful. If you would like to learn more about astrophotography image processing, I would like to recommend a book by my friend, uh, Rogelio Bernal Andreo, also known as RBA. And the book is titled Mastering PixInsight. Very highly recommended. All right, so don't forget to click like and subscribe. And uh, we will come back in a couple of weeks with another video. Thank you for watching.